Okay. So the next thing we're going to do, or the last thing we're going to do, is take a look at this the Thesis Developers Toolbox. Okay, because we played like crazy with the CSS. Now we're going to look at the Developers Toolbox. And, oh, look at that. I don't have the Developers Toolbox installed here. So, well, I guess I'll show you. Now, I'm just going to choose a different. I'm just going to use a different site for this. Okay. I'm not updating it to 2.1b12 because there is a f error in it. And I'm waiting for 13 to come out. You might wait too. 12 came out yesterday afternoon. And as soon as it came out, I found a, a bug. And I sent it over to Chris. And he's fixed it in 13. But 13 hasn't been released yet. So you may just wait there for that to come out but anyway I do have the dev tools box here though on this site and okay the dev tools box has a whole bunch of things to it the first one is use developers updates. And if you use the developers updates, then it's going to show you beta updates, right? Beta versions of thesis, beta versions of boxes, beta versions of the skin. So that's what clicking this for. That's what clicking this does. And you can always just check for updates here. Oh, actually, obviously he took the 12 down. Oh, pardon me. Use developer updates. Check for updates. He took the must have taken 12 down because of that little error. The other thing you can do, and this will automatically then, oh, pardon me. Save the options. Pardon me. Yeah, you got to save the options before you can check for the updates. Nope, 12 is still there, but I'm not going to update anyway. Okay, use developer updates. Skin editor options. If you check this box, well, if you don't check that box and you come over here to content, right, and you say you go to header image, that's where the options are for header image. And if you go over to the skin editor, and go to the header image box. And click on those options. It's not here. Right in thesis 2.1, the options were over here. Now the box options, this kind of box option is ported to the main, is ported to the dashboard. However, if you've got this thing checked, you've got that checked and you go over to the skin editor. The options are also open for you in the skin editor. So now if we take a look at header image, here's the options tab and you can do it here. This this makes it so you can set options while you're working in the skin editor and then when you give it back over to your customer, you know, the options are going to be set from the other place. Okay, so that's what that tool does. It opens up the box options for you in the skin editor. The next thing that this dev tools box does is it allows you to set up the existing skin, the current active skin, for distribution. Now, what that means is that if, if you do that and hit Save Box Options, and then come over to Manage Skins, now it has this thing that says Create Zip File. And you can you can create a zip file of the of the current skin. 
Yeah, you can create a zip file of the current skin. That when you create that zip file, if your skin doesn't already have a seed PHP, it will create a seed PHP for you when that happens. Now it doesn't rename the skin. The skin name stays the same, but it does nevertheless package absolutely everything associated with that skin, all images, everything. And so if I wanted to well, let's see, let's update Agility Nude first. Okay, so now I'm up to 1.09. I could activate Agility Nude. And then if I want to make my skin distributable, all I do is hit create a zip file. Right. People have asked the question, OK, so how do you make a skin available for other people to install? This is the only way to do it. Right. I, my skin copier plugin did that for you in Thesis 2, but it's not necessary in Thesis 2.1 because the developer box gives you that ability. So what you can do is just create the zip file, download the zip file, and now you've got a distributable version of that zip file of the skin. And if you look at its contents, right, it's got all of the elements of that skin, including the seed PHP that was originally created with it. OK, so it's got everything in it and thus it will automatically inserted into or, or I'm sorry inserted <laughs> my mind is going ahead of my mouth it can automatically be installed just like any just like any skin right so that's what you have to do in order to export a skin so that it can be installed okay the next whoops not editor I want to go to boxes boxes manage boxes Well, not managed boxes, thesis dev tools. So the next thing you can do is create a skin from scratch. Right. If you click this button here, you're going to get a dialogue that that will allow you to create a skin from nothing, essentially. Right. So you will give it a skin and we'll call it this the. What's new? In thesis 2.1 for pros. Skin author is Rick Anderson. Skin description. This is a test of the dev tools. Tools box ability to create a new skin. We'll call the skin version 1.0. I have created a screenshot for that. So I'm just going to choose the file as my for my screenshot and come over to let's see tutorial graphics and I think it's called sample screenshot sample screenshot open the, add that give it a class name and class name is all lowercase no spaces so use underscores instead of spaces, but all lowercase letters. And we'll just call this one Rick Test Skin. OK. Actually, you know what? Just in case. No, I'm not going to call it Rick Test Skin. I'm going to call it something else. Rick Seminar Skin. Because there might be a Rick Test Skin already in there, which would cause unusual problems, I believe. So we go ahead and create the skin. And now if we come over to our manage skins, here is a completely blank skin, right? This is the test of the dev tools ability to create a new skin. Here's its name by Rick Anderson. There's this little image that I did for it. If we activate the skin, we can go into the skin editor 
and you'll see that in the skin editor it is entirely and completely blank. Okay, it's got HTML body in the in the templates, and that's it. You got a completely blank skin. And if we look at that skin, let's look at that skin in FileZilla for a second. Let's see. I did have a Rick test skin there. However, I'm not seeing the there it is. Rick seminar skin now. If we open up Rick Seminar Skin, you can see inside the Rick Skin there's an Images folder, a CSS.CSS file, a custom PHP, a screenshot.ping, and a skin PHP. Okay? So it renamed my screenshot to screenshot.png from you know sample screenshot. And we essentially have this thing here. Now if you look at skin PHP in just in a plain old text editor, you can see there's no code in it, right? It's just got the bare basics necessary in order to set up a skin with a skin class definition, right? That's what it is. Now, if I wanted to, well, let's just say we go to home and we I don't know. We create a WP loop. And we shift drag that into the home. Save the template. Actually, we should we should do that in the front page. WP loop. Add it. Save the template. View the site. Oh, I'm sorry. WP loop doesn't have anything in it. We also have to put a post box in it. Now save the template. And refresh it. Okay, now we've got some content that shows up. Okay, if I come back over to Thesis and go to my DevTools and, oh no, pardon me, go to Manage Skins and say Create a Zip File. That has now created this Rick seminar skin in a way that can be used. It did not create a seed PHP, which I expected it to do. Yeah. You want a seed PHP here. I want that to create the seed PHP. I thought I was going to be showing you that. I guess I'm going to have to look into that a little bit. I'm not quite sure why that is the case. Well, okay, maybe default PHP is it. Let's see. Let's look at default PHP. Yeah, it is. It's created some boxes. Okay, it's not seed PHP, now it's default PHP. And Okay, my mistake. Let's see, Julia noticed that. Thank you for catching that, Julia. In any case, that will be able to be used to return the thing back to its default position. 
and when you install it, the installation routine is going to take the information out of default and insert it into insert it into the database. So that created the skin and made it exportable. Now, something else though that you can do with this, and this is perhaps the coolest thing. Well, this is the next coolest thing, and that is export skeleton data. So what you can choose to do is export boxes, templates, variables, CSS, custom CSS, design options, display options. You can choose to export any and all of that information as skin data and then import it into another skin. But you have to have the skin active in order for that to work. So if we come over here to manage skins and we make thesis classic response of the active skin, and then go back over to DevTools. Now I can export skeleton data. I'm going to export everything here. Okay, it's down here as a text file. Then come back over to Manage Skins. I can activate this skin test skin for thesis developers toolbox come back over to dev tools and I can import the skeleton data and it imports into the current skin so I import the skeleton data that I just downloaded right there import that. That changes everything that I had in there before. But if I refresh that, now most of what I did in the past is here sitting here correctly. Now what's not there from this are the images, right? The background image that I used for this here and the background image that I used down here, those are those did not come across with the skeleton. So those still need to be added back into the skin. But once I've done that, then I can export this skin for distribution using that, you know, save as zip file. So this is a very, very, very powerful tool now for skin developers to be able to create their own skins from pieces of other skins, for them to be able to create a base level skin and then export that data into a new skin and then modify that base level skin. It's a very powerful tool and it's something that I think is going to really ease development of skins considerably.